removal business is an exclusive world. 47 pieces of art worth um, approximately 150,000. Where wealthy clients demand the best. If it does not arrive tomorrow, I do not want it. And removal companies face the ultimate test. It does scare you sometimes how much stuff you're actually moving and how much that item's worth. I've never seen anything like that. Where planning is key. Wherever it is, four corners of the earth, not a problem. And emotions can run riot. It's their responsibility not to smash my items. So what's it like to be the people moving the nation's mansions? We're busy day in, day out. And you're only going to be busy day in, day out if you could. And once the lorries are gone and boxes unpacked, will everyone get the new life they dreamed of? I am so angry. With more than 365,000 people changing homes last year, Britain is a nation on the move. Hello, my name's Amanda. I'm calling from AGS in London. We move 55,000 families a year. 10% of that 55,000 are in that millionaire bracket. And with the UK having seen a 7% rise in millionaires recently, the luxury removal industry is booming. A high-end move could be 10, 20, 30,000, the sky's a limit. We move about eight to 10 houses a week, and I'd say uh, six to eight of those are over a million pounds. So it's step by step, straight lift. But it's not a business for the faint-hearted. Stress levels are very high for moving. It's just below death and divorce. We've been told, I can't bear this, can you go away? and come back tomorrow. And that's halfway through the first or second day. You're not only trying to cater for all their goods, you're also trying to kind of provide even a little bit of a counselling service. The, th the three top things for moving is definitely work, lifestyle. I think the third one is divorce. Dory Bonner International is one of the UK's leading high-end removal companies. We have about 8,500 storage containers as a company, about 140 operative staff, nine locations. Profit. Five. We hold around 1,250 storage containers here. It's people's lives in these wooden containers. The company's been taken on by 60-year-old mum of three, Beverly Booty. Get out, Beverly. Come on this way. We She's at a pivotal Elby. moment in her life. Come on, <laughs> We've spent 20 years here and made this house into a beautiful home. We've had great fun parties, birthday parties, our daughter's wedding here. They are all wonderful memories. And there's a part of me that doesn't want to lose those memories. Rood Ashton Manor is set in over three acres of lush grounds in Wiltshire. The house itself boasts 33 rooms, including a wine cellar, swimming pool, billiard room, and over a half a million pounds worth of precious antiques. This is a collector's item. It's made for the Norwegian royal family. That is going to be in excess of £20,000. Transporting the contents of a massive manor house is no mean feat, and that's where specialist companies come in. A bit of a trick would be, I would think, the chandelier. This is pretty high value because this is a gold-plated one. Further removal challenges lie below, with a wine cellar worth three quarters of a million pounds. It's all catalogued, it's all labelled, this is the first time we've ever had beautiful antiques moved by somebody, so it must be somebody I feel I trust. Beverly's lived at the manor for two decades, but with a divorce ongoing, that's about to change. My husband has left and um, it was very upsetting. I probably will shed some tears when I walk away from this place. I have to let go. We purchased Rue Ashton in 1993 for £320,000. We couldn't believe we got it for that price, but we spent a fortune on it. As you take a photograph album of the children, those photographs have got these items in them, so I would like to take some of that with me. I want somebody who's capable of dealing with these size of antiques, um, because they're not ordinary. Each time I look at each piece, I find it slightly upsetting. Each piece I am and are about as to, do I take it, do I leave it? I don't want to make a decision instantly at this stage to sell something and then regret it. With high-end moves costing anything from five to 30,000 pounds, the luxury removals business is a lucrative one. 
specialist AGS have over 100 branches worldwide, including one in West London. In a typical busy week, uh, we'd be doing between 50 to 60 moves a week. About 30% of those would be high-end. She's moved with us before, yeah. so she knows how it all works. We have eight owned vehicles on the road, 30 road crew. We move around 3,500 people a year. Our high-end clients range from premiership footballers through to pop stars and even the royal family. The removal company have been taken on by 42-year-old interior designer, Yvette Taylor. Good boy! The single mom moved to England from Spain four years ago, so her son William could get the best possible education. Go, go, go! Go for it! William's father left when he was six weeks old, so I have been single for a very long time, and I hope that maybe this relocation will bring somebody new into, into our lives, that I might meet someone nice and decent. Her current luxury home in Berkshire is made up of seven ensuite bedrooms and spans 10,000 square feet, space that's much needed for a vet's penchant for fashion. As you see, this is my walking wardrobe. I have over 200 pairs of shoes and probably more than 600 dresses. So they all will have to be moved to, to my new home. The house uh, which we are living in now uh, is for uh, nearly four million pounds and now I have been paying 12,000 pounds rent. What we are moving to, my cost is going to more than double. I will be paying 26,000 pounds monthly and the house is for nearly seven million pounds. As a high-end interior designer, Yvette is already planning a full renovation of her new property. But she's also got to move. And that means transporting a house full of luxury possessions, including a £5,000 table, a £35,000 grand piano, and a bespoke £80,000 painting by British artist Jessica Zub. I love the layers when you look at the way how she is using the colour. I immediately fell in love with it, but I had to wait almost two years to be able to buy it. What are you going to play? The Sonatina in F by Diabelli. A high flyer herself, Yvette's expecting nothing less from 10-year-old son William. The piano, I have to play half an hour. Sometimes it's a pain, sometimes it's fun. William is at the moment practicing three new pieces for the grade five. Going to Eton has been one of my main goals because Eton is a massive opportunity for me to get into great architecture universities for my business and work. With over half a million pounds worth of furniture and art to transport, Yvette's invited her moving company surveyor, Michael, to visit. Hi, Hello. Yvette. Yes, that's nice me. to see you. I'm Hello. Michael from AGS. Thank you for coming. Assessing the scale of a job and dealing with client specific requests is key when it comes to luxury removals. I'll just call this bedroom number one. Nine times out of ten, if you've got a high end client, they've probably moved before. They know the process. So sometimes they tell you what should be done. I didn't tell you how we want to do it. It's exactly the same way as we did it last time. Yep. I need a seven, the bubble wraps, the, the huge rolls. Yeah. So my fitters will do this bubble do wrapping. That, if that's what not the crating, not the crating, no, that's what no, you have okay. to do, but all the other so items. So you need some packing materials, you need some and the Do you know how many boxes do you need? You know what? 700. Yvette will be packing up the majority of the contents herself. I will have two fitters working for me four weeks preparing wow, all of this. that's amazing. But she's relying on the movers to safely deal with her £80,000 prize piece of art. So this is the most precious piece I actually have in the house. Oh, okay. So it's... Right. Uh, very important. Yeah, very, very special. Right. And right. Uh, that can't get neither lost, neither, neither damaged. Right. This is a local move. We wouldn't normally put them in wooden crates. I, I think they yes. have a great value, so we will we crate will them. We will crate them. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So, Yvette, can yeah. I ask you, why are you leaving this amazing home? Why are you leaving this house? Oh, I, I think London is super exciting and it's a yes. new chapter of my life. I want to improve my, you know, social skills and, mm -hmm. and meet new people. So I'm detecting something else though, aren't I? What's the real reason you're no, moving? No, I just, I just want to, you know, new life. Anything else? I don't know. I'm not sure. Wait and, Wait and see. Wait and see. Watch this space. So thank you so much. It was an absolute well, pleasure. You. It's very, very important at this stage that I am accurate. But she's very clear. She knows what's going where, and I key it into this little system, which is magic. So it makes it very clear. It's all listed. I get my little printed report. There we go. But with a house move the size of a vet, Michael and the removal company have their work cut out. A vet's move is three times the normal volume that we move. The average four bedroom house, which is not a small house, not insignificant, would be about 30 cubic metres. A vet's move is over 90. The world of upmarket movers is big business. And with a growing number of property millionaires in Britain, there's an increasing supply of clients. You spend 40 million on a house, so 100,000 removal, not that big a deal. There's never been something that's too large or too complicated or too high value or too heavy even. We move anything across Europe and internationally. Germany first, then go down to Switzerland. In Wiltshire, Beverly's waiting for her removal company to turn up. They should be here any moment now, so I'll watch out for them to open the gates. I've never seen a dirty Bonner's removal company lorry, and that to me says something. If they look after those sorts of things well, they'll look after your possessions well. I might be wrong, but that's the way I look at things. With over 30 years' experience, Beverly's move is being led by team leader Graham. We're going to lift it because we don't want it to slide. Mm -hmm. As you try and lift it up, try and bring it so it's central. Moves like this one can typically cost anywhere between five to seven thousand pounds. It does scare yeah. you sometimes. There's much stuff you're actually moving, and how much that item's worth. She said to us, "Is about thirty thousand for the cabinet." So, yeah. <laughs> After three days of intensive wrapping and packing, the fourth and final day will be spent creating the large, valuable items. The bespoke crates are made to measure by a team of specialist workmen. I've always made cases that I made sure that whatever goes in them doesn't get broken. They've been on the wall for a long time, but I mean, obviously, they are very, very delicate. They will not survive being jigged about, so they need to be literally kept in their own situation. I believe she is from the 1820s or something, so if you were from 1820, you'd probably be a bit delicate too. <laughs> Next on the crating list, an urn bought from exclusive auctioneer Sotheby's, worth over £4,000. It does look scary, it's got many bits and pieces on it. It could be that it just gets slightly touched, those fingers could go, so... We literally just take photographs to point out, yes, it has been damaged before, and we're then like saying on record. So you treat other people's stuff as though it's your own. Yeah. We're just going to literally pad the areas out that we think are vulnerable to getting snapped off again. Yeah. Right, a bit towards Stuart. Yeah. The ratchet is actually going to ratchet it down so it pulls the top onto the base because at the moment, as you can see, she's a little bit vulnerable for movement. There's a part of me that's fascinated to see what they're doing and there's another part of me that actually says I don't want to see it happening. <laughs> the urns receive the VIP treatment, but it's another antique that's causing a bit of a stir. He has always been a bit of a focal point and at Christmas I'm afraid to say he was more of a focal point than he should have been because my mother who was in her 90s would come for Christmas and couldn't cope with having lunch and looking at Narcissus's willy. Um, so we used to have to put tinsel round his waist and dangle tinsel across his private parts. Um, he brings back very fond memories but um, I don't think he needs tinsel to go in the box. I think he's all right. <laughs> It would be fun to keep him and have another Christmas with grandchildren who will have as much fun as my children had with him. Looking at something that eye level, uh, a man's, um, you know, bit looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> you should be used to men's bits, come on. <laughs> with Narcissus and his bits safely contained, Beverly has time to reflect on the home and garden she's about to leave.
My mother never ever thought we'd leave here. She bought me this tulip tree and my husband a copper beach, which was his favourite. I think all of my children and all their friends have played roly polies down here. We've had some wonderful memories, but then that is what homes are about, is, is memories. Originally bought for 320,000, the manor was recently valued at nearly three million pounds. But the need for a quick sale has meant compromising. Now we've let it go for less than two million, which is sad because I think it's worth a lot more than that now, but um, best to let it go and move on. Yeah, I think today was a very productive day. I managed to get all the crating out of the way, which is, you know, one of the hard things is the crate inside of it. So, yeah, it's good. Well, thank you very much indeed for your trouble. Well, thank you. Well, nice to have met you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Look after Miss Sissers for me. <laughs> OK. The house now is bare, which is a horrible word. It's still a beautiful house, but when it goes, the heart goes out of your home. So will Beverly's next home give her the new start she's looking for? I can actually begin now to visualise each item disappearing, thinking where are they going to be next? And at my stage in life, that you're at the end of a journey. Um, yes, the next journey is continuing, but it's a completely different journey. When it comes to upmarket moves, shifting valuable and unusual objects goes with the territory. They actually seem a reasonably good nick, um, which probably given the age is quite impressive. We had a 10 foot stuffed bear put into a container, which is yet yeah, slightly uh, against the norm. One of the most memorable items we've moved is uh, the cocktail sausage, which as it turns out came out of Margaret Thatcher's mouth. Well used to handling the unusual and the unique, company Draycott and Fenimore, set up by university friends Adam and Simon, have been moving wealthy clients for the last six years. We've gone from, from nothing to working in some of the most serious homes around these areas. We're busy day in, day out, and you're only going to be busy day in, day out if you're good. We probably work with you know 15 to 20 properties per week as a company. Maybe a good eight to ten of those will be kind of on the, uh, on the dear side of a million. On their books planning to move are the Jacobsons. Nice guys. Thank you. 55 year old Susanna and 62 year old Douglas, originally from Sweden, live in a two and a half million pound house in a gated community in Surrey. I've been working as a CEO of an insurance company uh, with international business. I did spend you know, most of my time uh, on airplanes, really. At the peak, I was probably traveling 200 days a year. Mm -hmm. I was. Uh, coming in and out on the weekends, basically. That's how it was, wasn't it? Now with Douglas due to retire from his high-flying job, the family have set their sights on an escape to the country. This move we're going to do now is, is a completely new life for us, so we're going back to nature, you can say. But this isn't any ordinary move. Susanna and Douglas are planning on creating a five million pound estate, including barn conversion and 300,000 pound vineyard to make sparkling wine. We like wine and sparkling wine. That sounds like fun. My choice is to uh, carry on working. The only difference is I'm not doing insurance business anymore. What I'm doing now is that I'm going to vineyards. Mum Susanna is determined to make the move a success and has a unique approach. For over 10 years, she's practiced the ancient Chinese art of Feng Shui, arranging one's house to bring good health and prosperity. When I walk into a room, I feel the energy and how you feel in it and what is wrong in the room. This is a power mat of the way of the rose. And uh, when I sit here by my small desk, I need it because in the Feng Shui, when I have my back towards the door, it's not very good. The rest of the family mostly think I'm a bit uh, swishy swashy. The family's travels have taken them all over the world and they've got the souvenirs to match. We like to fill our home with uh, special things and uh, especially when we go abroad and bring the world home in our home. And that's not all. Douglas's love of hunting means the house is crammed with unusual trophies, a challenge for any removals company. 
I shot this one in uh, Zululand in South Africa and on my wish list was actually a zebra at the time. I was uh, lucky to be able to spot one uh, in, uh, in a small herd. My wife really fancied this as a uh, rag on the floor. Of course, you can buy these things in the stores if you want to do that, but uh, I always wanted to uh, you know, have something that I shot myself. This well, manner. this is another trophy from uh, Mozambique. It's a leopard, as you can see here, uh, who I was chasing for five days before we got him. It was a great, great experience, fantastic. I did hunt him down in Zululand. He's around 12 years old, and we've been uh, searching for, um, for that particular male for uh, yeah, at least you know, a couple of days before we can find him. I haven't sent him out on a shopping list. When he goes out there, it's really, you know, man time for him. And it's like me going to the spa, <laughs> I think. He's really happy when he comes back. It's 8.30 a.m. on the day of the move, and Simon and his team have arrived ready to get stuck in. Hello. Hello, Simon Draco and Yes. With the Jacobson's move costing over £5,000 and over 300 boxes to fill, the team will be earning every penny. You finish when you finish. You don't finish when you want to. You finish when the job is done. And every move brings new challenges. All right, Jack. Basically going to wrap and pack this now. Every property is different. Obviously, don't usually get to play around with the African savannah. How are they going to pack the zebra? We'll fold it and effectively sandwich it. We don't want to uh, ruffle the skin at all and potentially cause it to stretch or deform. I thought it was going to be rolled up, you know, like you usually do with a carpet. I think my husband will be pleased. Definitely keeping our wits about us. If you break it, that's it. There's no replacing it. Next on the list, an antique desk that Douglas inherited from his grandfather. I was a very young boy. I remember my grandfather sitting on that one in his uh, beautiful house in Gothenburg. You've got to be careful if you don't want to snap a leg or some of the veneer or something to fall off. Is everything on it to go? Would you like us to pack it? Would you like your husband to pack it? No, you can pack it. He will take what he, he needs and then you can pack everything. Perfect. No two properties are the same. Um, you can turn up and everything's you know, beautifully nice and square, drop straight into, straight into boxes, very easy, straightforward. Um, or you can have the most fantastic, ornate, bizarrely shaped items and take you two or three in a day because you've got to still support everything in the same manner. Closing the back door is always the best part of the job. The worst part of the job is probably about 10 minutes before that when you're desperately struggling to get the last 5% uh, on. So um, basically all the kind of the awkward stuff that we've been ignoring for the last three days is suddenly uh, coming to the fore. With the last of the boxes loaded, it's the end of the day for Simon and the team. The actual removal has gone pretty well, I think. Managed to, uh, you know, keep up the momentum. Still showing me his boss. End of job. Happy days. I've been waiting now for two years for this uh, move and everything to get ready. But are the Jacobsons taking on too much with their ambitious plans? Luxury removals has its rewards. Obviously, don't usually get to play around with Ming vases. It's going to be a process of elimination now. And challenges. We're just going to open every box until we find it. Needle in a haystack. High end clients does mean high risk because quite often the general value of their items tend to be much higher. If you've got something that really didn't cost much to a £50,000 painting, there's going to be a huge difference. So I can understand how customers feel about their items. No, this is not for you. In London's exclusive Notting Hill, amateur art collector Dora and husband Mick are preparing to move out of their two and a half million pound house. I can't be there Thursday and Friday. That's meant for you. Huh? Mm. What's that, darling? <laughs> yeah, don't darling me, you're so full of shit. We've just gotten married. And even though the two of us together is over 100 years old, it's not too late to start a new life together. Coming with them is their prized possession, a portrait of American President Barack Obama by controversial British artist Joe Black. Made up of over 11,000 plastic soldiers, 
it's worth £50,000. Have they worked out how they're going to get it off? Because I think it was six people putting it up, so that's why I'm worried about. With Dora left to deal with the removers alone, the day isn't getting off to the best of starts. Hi, this is Dora. He's supposed to be here at 8.30. Traffic, of course. What else in England? A little while later, and the removers arrive. Finally! Good morning. The bed goes. The painting goes. It can be quite challenging um, when they hover. For the removal company, this one item could make or break the job. This is new, this sort of picture. It's just the, the little men not breaking one off and the weight, that'd be probably quite heavy. The nine foot piece of artwork will be transported in a custom made crate. But before they can pack it, they must get it down in one piece. This someone's pride and joy, so it can be a bit nerve wracking if you pull that top out because you've got the leeway to do it. That's it. That's it. So I'm off, I'm right. Yeah. It's not heavy. Is it? No. Oh. Not unless I grow some muscles overnight. With the president safely removed, the boys can finally breathe a sigh of relief. Right, she's in there. I was thinking, if I could make a smaller version, I might be able to sell it for 10 grand, if it's only a little one. Oh my God, hang on, let me take a picture. In his coven. Nail him. Hopefully, come out in one piece. Relieved it's on the van now. In Berkshire, moving company AGS have arrived at interior designer Yvette's house, ready to start loading up. We'll keep this one here all day. Yeah. With moves like Yvette's costing over eight and a half thousand pounds, operations manager Dave is keen all goes smoothly. We've supplied a lot of packing material here, so it's done a pretty good job, actually. Yeah. As the contents are already wrapped, it's down to Dave and his team to fill the trucks with over 600 boxes. Show the lads where... Uh... No, 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 no. Oh, all right, OK, because this goes to Chelsea. <laughs> we want to load everything nice and tightly. If we can get it on one load, even better, you know? But some fragile items aren't quite as straightforward as others. This whole, whole entire thing is mirror. So it's very, very fragile. You have to perhaps put about three or four guys around it when carrying it down marble stairs. It's step by step, straight lift, straight lift, step by step all the way down. Watch the alignment of steps there. Well done. There are going to be very sort of fragile pieces and very expensive pieces of furniture here. Um, at the end of the day, yes, we can move a chest of drawers when it's clad in bevel cut glass mirrors and everything else and it becomes a different story. Loading well underway, it's time to tackle a vet's substantial art collection. I just learned the uh, paintings here are worth £150,000 collectively. I believe one of them is worth £30,000, so I'll oversee the uh, creating of that one. So this is the painting from Jessica Zoo. We do have a crate for this. It's actually still on the vehicle. So, um, yeah, we'll get that out and create it like all the others. So, yeah, not a problem there. Yes. My baby. And this is where you find out it's too small. No, the other way. Oh, shit, baby. I'm happy. That is good. That is good. Went in there nicely, didn't it? I was worried in case it would be a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's good. All good. With the high value artwork taken care of, the final items are loaded. I think it's gone really well. We've got two good loads out of here. There's no handling involved. The loading process, just the unloading and into the property there. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident about that. It's good. At Yvette's new house, renovations are continuing up to the last minute. Today there are 22 workers working in the townhouse to get everything ready for our move. But will they finish before the removers arrive? In London, it's moving in day for Yvette. She's left a £4 million mansion in Berkshire for her new home. A Chelsea townhouse worth nearly £7 million. Despite a team of builders working flat out, the vet's turned up to find the house is still a building site. I am so angry, you can't imagine. The house is full of tools of the workers, so we have to first empty their staff to get it out. A 
and her Polish foreman is nowhere to be found. Lže, není to pravda, lže, není to pravda. The house is not ready to move in, so it's very stressful at the moment. We need to clean up this floor, it's too dusty. Okay, that's fine. I am not giving up. I'm going to show the guys that even though they messed up seriously, we're going to move in. Removal company AGS have arrived ready to unload. But with the decorators still at work, ops manager Dave is facing a change of plan. Yvette, what's happening with the unpacking? No unpacking today. No, I guess that's because of the general sort of building work still going on and yes. uh, yeah. So you're happy for us to move everything in, no unpacking, no uncrating, and then we'll arrange the unpack at a later date, yes? Uh, yeah, so if you could get everything in, that it's not Excellent. on the ray. You can't really unwrap this nature of furniture or the paintings or anything. Um, it gets very hazardous in there. There's guys in there with building tools and dust and paint flying around. I'm glad I'm running the removal side of it and not the decoration projects. Third floor, I think. Okay. No, no, it's Okay. And with the pressure on, things are running far from smoothly. Downstairs, Yvette's own fitters have made a nasty discovery. Broken my exclusive dining table. It's a 160 dining table from Pietro Costantini, worth 5,000, and it's completely smashed. So from this side, it's like a totally, entirely ruined. It's totally destroyed. It's smashed, it's totally smashed the table. Yvette has pointed out, um, in her own unique way, some damage to a rather expensive dining room table, and it's about five grand's worth of table. It's their responsibility not to smash my items. I'm very angry. It's not right. While Dave feeds the news back to base, Yvette continues with the unloading, and now every item is under scrutiny. It is very fragile, this mirror. It's very, very fragile. It's a mirror, yeah? And it's not long before they come across the £80,000 piece of art that has to be delivered to the first floor. I think it will go through the door at a diagonal, i.e. sort of corner to corner. I'm fairly confident it will. I'm usually pretty good at mental measurement, if you know what I mean. Obviously, you've got to bear in mind this is an £80,000 canvas, um, and you can't be sort of forcing it over sharp corners or anything like that. Otherwise, uh, well, it's probably not going to be worth £80,000 after that. and then just turn it. So that is the final location of Jessica Zoo. Here we go, we have it here. I think it will remain in the bubble wrap for another at least two weeks, but I can't wait to see it on the wall. Outside, Dave's heard back from the office about the damaged table. Now, the problem here being is we did not wrap this table. This could have happened anywhere prior to wrapping. This is what we always say to clients, if you're packing your own effects, we can't insure it. I don't care who smashed it, but they have to buy me a new table. Get the professionals to do the whole thing from uh, start to finish. No matter how good people think they are, they can wrap plates or, oh, it's only putting a bit of wrapping around furniture, it, uh, it doesn't happen. Um, leave it to us, we do it six days a week, 52 weeks of the year. We're the guys to leave it up to. Eight hours of unloading later, the vans are empty. It's a pity we didn't get it all in today and perhaps look forward to a sort of relatively sort of smooth day tomorrow unpacking. We've got a couple more days here at least, I believe. It's removals. What can you do? The vet's banking on starting afresh in Chelsea, but with a moving in party already in the diary and renovations far from complete, will it be an uphill battle? Across London, amateur art collector Dora and husband Mick have left Notting Hill behind to move into their first home together in Kensal Rise. His study is a word to actually describe to you how happy I am. Is our first home that we picked it together. It may have moved little more than a mile, but will their delicate artwork of President Obama with its 11,000 tiny soldiers have survived the journey? Are you OK? have to go outside to uncrate it. Do not rain. Yeah, Many hands make live work. Yeah. Finally, the moment of truth. Oh my God. Still the president of America? Only just. <laughs> <laughs> Each 
likely to move house an average of eight times in our lifetime. Hello, my name's Amanda. I'm calling from AGS in London. I've received a message about your move to Spain. And with luxury removals often costing over £5,000, the high-end part of the industry is increasingly lucrative. A high-end move can be anything from a few thousand to tens of thousands of pounds. Wine cellars, Warhol paintings to warthog heads, all sorts of weird and wonderful things. It's always more than just moving house. It's almost like a brand new life for our clients. It's 10 days since interior designer Yvette moved into her unfinished £7 million Chelsea home, hoping to improve her social life and look for a long-term partner. This chocolatey one, which makes me dirty, but I want to... Mm. Mm. <laughs> Although the work's still not complete, she's pulled out all the stops to host a housewarming soiree, including hiring a personal chef and waiting staff. I'm very excited to meet my friends and my, uh, my new birth. I hope that this move to, to London will bring into my life uh, someone very special and uh, that um, I will be able to start a new chapter of my life. Oh, thank you so much for coming. This is such a lovely international evening. Yvette's making a long-term commitment to her new life in Chelsea. Are you going to live here? Yeah, for 10 years. So I'm renting this house for 10 years. Which means over the next decade, Yvette will be paying over one and a half million pounds in rent on the house alone. I still have some boxes to unpack and then I can concentrate again on my work. Back to business, back to reality, back to normal. And then we can start going out and party a little bit. A new life. Yes. With the party in full swing, Yvette gets a chance to impress her new neighbours and friends with the home's lavish decor. Uh, frozen that chandelier is <laughs> quite something. The room centrepiece, a £24,000 Murano glass chandelier, was designed by Yvette herself, part of a lavish quarter of a million pound renovation. Robin, uh, nice to meet you. Nice day. Pleasure. The evening's been a big success. Vets feeling optimistic. I'm super excited about the future. You never know what to expect behind the corner, and it's going to be good. Also embarking on a new life are the Jacobsons. They're trading a two and a half million pound townhouse for an ambitious multi-million pound project in the country. Their new home is a £5 million estate in Kent, with barn conversion, outbuildings and land for a vineyard that they're spending over £1.5 million renovating. I've been waiting now for two years for this uh, move and everything to get ready. The movers are due, but first Feng Shui enthusiast Susanna has hired an expert consultant to balance the energies of the new house. Hello. <laughs> It's a very strong scent, isn't it? Yes, it is. We have to be careful for the smoke detectors. <laughs> I did wonder. They're all walking around in a line through the house, Sandy in the front, mum and dad following. It all seems a little, you know, sort of ritualistic, almost uh, but freaky, really. <laughs> the house is really responding well. It's really becoming your home now. Rebalancing over, the removals company arrive. Co-owner Simon and a crew of four have two trucks to unload and it all has to be completed by the end of the day, no matter what. Big job, very big job. Obviously today, you know, we've got the clients have got a stressful situation. A moving house in its own is stressful, especially into a property this large. Um, you know, construction crew on site, so, 20 different people asking 20 different questions and you know basically I've just got to kind of be the obnoxious one to make sure my questions are answered first. Where, where are the sofa and things like that to go? Where do you most have your living room? Well that is not finished. That is not finished, no. okay. So we're gonna just, just put them somewhere. When I see them, I put them. Today we're having to kind of put items in temporary locations so you know I think another removal company in probably a couple of weeks time when everything's finished will end up being dragged over here to uh, tidy everything up for us. You've got to work around whatever commitments people have. 
and today the team will also have to work around the weather. It's starting to rain now and if anything it's starting to get heavier so another kind of reason to basically push it on early. Over the next 10 hours, the movers will need to shift over 300 boxes and assorted furniture weighing in at over five tons. Definitely a lot to do, so we've got to keep the momentum going, keep the tempo up. There's always a certain amount of anticipation. You know, if you've got a, you've got a client who's, kind of, uh, who's, over, who's watching over you, and obviously they've got concern for their items. If anything, they've wrapped it too bloody well. It's probably taking me the best part of 20 minutes trying to skin this. Skinned. Moving in dance language, it means that you unwrap it. All these little 10 minutes here, 15 minutes here, 20 minutes there, you know, obviously that's hours by the end of the job. Done. And with this move, the contents include everything from household items and antiques to the more unusual. I've got a gazelle's head with antlers and two skins. Nothing ever normal with this job. We do move some strange stuff. That, I assume, Leopard? That, I've never seen anything like that. Nothing real that's actually, you know, just its head staring at you when you open a box. Got to try and get in here without slicing the bugger's tail off. It's kind of weird, you can leave a bullet hole in it, but if I slash it with a knife, then it really bloody be peeved. You know, when you're unwrapping an item in front of a customer, even though, you know, we're more than confident that everything's cool with it, there's always a kind of like little bit heebie-jeebies. Oh, that looks good. Oh, it looks good. You know, I've got work in really strong unison. We're here to provide a service where they're left with how the property's left. Equally, we don't want to be putting stuff in willy-nilly and then spending a couple of hours at the end of the day and kind of rearrange everything. So we try and get everything into situ straight away. Everyone gets home that little bit quicker. It's the end of the day and the movers are finally finished. Job done. Now it's pack up, light up the lorries, put the back doors on and home to that great car park called the M25. I think today actually we've worked very well together. We're doing an unpack service today, so kind of in the full glare of the clients. Um, you know, we managed to get everything out of the boxes, everything's in one piece, clients are happy, we're happy, can't complain. The Jacobsons moving to the country with their two sons is the start of a whole new life. We got four and a half hectares of wine here, <laughs> and if it turns out well, and hopefully, this will become a family business for many generations. This is honest, solid agriculture. We think things go right. Forty thousand bottles a year. Yeah. Yeah. It feels a little bit not for real, but it is. It was much more work than we expected. Or, yeah, with the house and with, and with the everything. Home. But now, when we stand here, mm -hmm. I feel... Happy? I feel, yeah, I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, I also feel proud. But it feels like, you know, I'm really going to live here. Yeah. Like they say, I'm worth it. Ongoing, 60 year old mum of three, Beverly Booty, has had to sell a 33 room manor house in Wiltshire. It had billiard rooms, it had an indoor swimming pool, it had a massive TV room for the children to sit on great big plumpy sofas and watch videos together. Most of the contents of the manor are in storage, and Beverly's moved from her former mansion into her new temporary home. A log cabin on a farm in Somerset owned by the family. Last few weeks have been pretty tough, having moved out of the house. Now I've got to look at all the boxes and finally start to go through things properly to actually see what I've got and what I really should get rid of and process. It's been a huge emotional roller coaster. It may be a tenth of the size of the manor, but Bevel is determined to turn her new cabin into a home. So this is the sitting room as such. The difference here, especially with the dogs in such close proximity, is the dirt levels and the dust levels. At Rude Ashton I had cleaners. At Rude Ashton I had gardening people to help me. I now have to do all of this myself. All of you on the yard, you'll be in trouble. Come on. And with the cabin set in the middle of the 80 acre farm, there's plenty to keep her busy. This is my escape, basically, to total freedom. And you come here and watch the animals graze and watch them do their job is 
totally priceless. Um, to me, this is heaven. My grandchildren don't care that grandma lives with piles of boxes. They think it's exciting to have a penguin in your bedroom. For Beverly, moving house has been a life-defining time. The beauty of what has happened here has been the time I've spent with my granddaughter has been magical. My grandson, who is now a year old, can't wait to come and visit grandma on the farm because of the cows and the pigs. Hello, pretty. Oh, he thinks grandma, I think, lives with the pigs. I'm not quite sure, but he loves every moment of it. Those sorts of things have become something very, very special. So those times would never have happened if this hadn't happened. So there's always a positive. I enjoyed Rude Ashton very much, and I very much enjoy beautiful linen sheets and beautiful seven-foot double beds, which is what I'm used to. But I am a realist. I know that most people don't live the way I used to live at Rude Ashton. People used to look at us and say, wow, you live in a millionaire's house. Well, I've never looked at myself as being a millionaire. I'm me. I always was me. And hopefully I always will be and have my feet on the ground to realise I was very, very lucky.